so much power in the name of the Lord. There is power in the name of so much power in the name. There is joy in the name of so much joy in the name. Yeah, there is joy in the name of so much joy in the name. Oh, we come to bless that wonderful name of. We come to bless that. Yeah, we come to bless that wonderful. Bless that wonderful name. Yeah, there is love in the name of. So much love in the name. There is love in the name. Come on and give God praise. He got up. How many know he did get up? And because he got up, I have power to live right, power to talk right, power to walk right, because he got up. Oh, my, my, my. I love the Lord today. I thank God for his love for us. It was love that drove him to the cross. Love. Love, as the songwriter said, lifted me. I was sinking deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore. But the master of the sea heard my despairing cry. And from the waters he lifted me. Now saved am I. I love the Lord today. I don't need a praise team to let you know I love the Lord. I don't need a facilitator to let you know how much I love the Lord. Don't need a choreographer to give me any dance steps. Because when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me, my soul cries out, hallelujah. Thank God for saving me. Is anybody here saved? I remember when folk used to just come to church and somebody would say, I'm saved. And the rest of the church would just bust out in a praise. But people seem like they ain't just satisfied with being saved. I'm satisfied with being saved, sanctified, baptized in the precious Holy Ghost. Look at your neighbor and tell him I'm saved. Y'all sit down, please.
Hallelujah. I thank God for this day. And it is a day that we know that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day that he has made. A lot of other, other types of days, but this day that the Lord has made. We're going to go to the scriptures today, and we're going to read a few scriptures. I know you want some excitement, but I came with excitement. I don't have to come to church to try to find some excitement. You got to have the church in you. The generation of the church that I came from, they came with the church in them. They didn't come in the church to have church. They came with church came with praise, came with worship. Today, we got to emotionalize you just to let somebody think that they had church. No, baby, if I get out of church and I'm living and I'm walking, I'm talking, I had church because I heard the word of God. The word came so that I can have life abundantly. Oh, boy. But the scripture in mind today, dealing with the resurrection of Christ, it's in Luke chapter 24, verses 1 through 9. And this will be more of an expository than anything today. Because we need word more than we need hop and jump and shout, pop and circumstance. We need word. Because you can jump, hop, dance and shout and still go home with hell or jealousy or hatred or not talking to the person you sitting next to, but you're going to dance with me, but you ain't going to talk to me. You're going to shout with me, but you ain't going to celebrate with me. Oh, yeah. But many people celebrate Easter, and they think they're celebrating the resurrection of Jesus Christ, but truly they are being destroyed celebrating a false god. So today, this will not be your traditional Easter sermon. By any measure, the resurrection of Jesus Christ is the most radical of Christian doctrine. The scripture in Luke chapter 24, verses 1 through 9. Hmm. Thank you, Holy Ghost. It says, now upon the first day of the week, very early in the morning, they came unto the sepulcher, bringing the spices which they had prepared and certain others with them. And they found the stone rolled away from the sepulcher, and they entered in. And found not the body of the Lord Jesus. And it came to pass as they were much perplexed thereabout. Behold, two men stood by them in shining garments. And as they were afraid and bowed themselves or bowed down their face to the earth, they said unto them, Why seek? The, ye the living among the dead. And he is not here, but is risen. Remember how he spake unto you when he was yet in Galilee, saying, the Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men, be crucified. And the third day, rise again. And they remembered his words. And then returned from the sepulcher and told all these things unto the eleven. And all the rest. So we understand that by any means, by any measure, the resurrection of Jesus Christ is the most radical doctrine that we have. They were there where they laid him. 
where his body was. It was empty. The resurrection is the keystone of the gospel. The empty tomb stands as a monument of God's power and our faith in Jesus. It would not matter that Jesus died, that Jesus suffered in agony. It would not matter at all what happened on Calvary if Jesus was not raised from the dead. And we know Jesus is the son of God. In Romans chapter 1 in verse 4. You all stay with me if you can. I see some of our CME saints here today. Christmas, Mother's Day, and Easter. So... The Bible says, and declared to be the son of God with power. Hmm, y'all following me? The scripture says what? And declared to be the son of God. We know Jesus is the son of God. Here the scripture says, and declared to be the son of God with power according to the spirit of worldliness. But the spirit of holiness by the resurrection from the dead. I don't know if you are celebrating Easter or the resurrection of Christ. But whatever you're celebrating, you need to know that the celebration of the resurrection of Christ is more weighty and more powerful than any other holiday that we can ever imagine and we don't need to treat it like a holiday we need to treat it like a lifestyle because he lives the resurrection is the power unto our salvation everything that we have everything that we possess everything the in faith that we have in faith everything that that we hope for is because he is risen. I don't know about you, but I didn't come here this morning or this afternoon just to go through a ritual. I didn't show up just to have my name checked off in a box. But I came here because I know he lives. And because he lives everything that we have. Because he lives he deserves the very best. Because if he was dead, we'd be pitiful. We'd be running around looking for turtle doves and goats and calves. But the blood of Jesus, and I believe in the Son of God, the power that raised Jesus from the dead is still here today. Oh boy, I wish I could talk to some of you in here today. We're going to Psalms chapter 2 or Psalms 2 and verse 7. We know that he lives to give us power. We understand that there are two problems in life. That's sin and death. And we know that Jesus Christ came to deal with both of those problems. One, he deals with sin, and he dealt with it on the cross. For the Bible said that he bore our sin. He took our sin on Golgotha's hill, and he hung on the cross for our sin. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. By his stripes we're healed. The blood that he he. The blood that, he, that ran from his head, the blood that ran from his body, dealt with the sins of this world. And then he dealt with death by coming out of the tomb and letting us know that we have victory over death. 
Psalms chapter 2 verse 7 talks to us and tells us a little more about him being the begotten son. He said, I will declare the decree. This is the Messiah talking. The Lord has said unto me, thou art my son. And this day have I begotten thee. He wasn't talking about Mary having a little baby in the manger. Talking about no little boy running through the town of Jerusalem. Wasn't talking about a little carpenter's son that knew the scripture. Oh my. But he's talking here about being coming out of the grave. And as he is in the grave and Jesus is being raised by God, God is saying to him, this day have I begotten thee. This day have you become my only begotten son because flesh and blood could not bring you back. Oh, the strength of sacrifice could not bring you back. And the application, as Peter in, in Acts chapter uh, 13, verse 32, can we just talk to you about the scripture? As most of you don't bring your Bible to church no more. I would tell you, turn with me, but some of you would turn and some of you would look at the screen. Scripture says in verse 32, and we declare unto you glad tidings. How that the promise which was made unto the fathers. I want you to understand that that glad tidings is the gospel. It is the gospel that got you in the place you're in. It is the gospel that got you out of the gutter most. It is the gospel that got you from got, got you from getting high. It is the gospel that got you from stopping you from drinking and, and, and riotous living. It is the gospel of Jesus Christ. The Bible said it is, I declare unto you glad tidings how that the promise which was made unto the Father. God has fulfilled the same unto us, their children, in that what? He raised up Jesus again. And as it is written in the second psalm, thou art my son, and this day, didn't talk about when he gave Mary the, the birth of Jesus Christ. We're talking about the impregnation of the Holy Spirit, of the immaculate conception, but he's talking about when he went in the tomb and came out of the tomb living and breathing and talking and healing and eating. He said flesh and blood cannot. Oh my God. The only begotten of the Father. So we understand that we're not just talking about a, a dead man. If we talk about a dead man, then your addiction is still an addiction. If we're talking about a dead man, then you're still in your sins. If we're talking about a dead man, then we're just sitting in here going through the motion. But we're talking about someone who is living, that is begotten. He deserves our faith. He deserves our best. He deserves our commitment. He deserves our praise. He deserves our worship. I don't know about you, but I don't need somebody to tell me to worship God. I don't need somebody to tell me to worship Jesus. But when I think of how he raised me up, how he healed me, how he delivered me, how he gave me another chance. And see, that's what I'm talking to you today, that Jesus Christ gives us the ability to walk away from our mistakes. See, people want to hang you for your mistake. Wish I could talk to you in here today. Can I just talk for a little while? People want to hang you and tell you that your mistakes have ended your destiny. But I, I beg to differ. Your mistakes have not made your destiny stop or what God has for you not to come to pass. God is designing a comeback for you. It is unique. It is powerful. It cannot be stopped because the power of God, the resurrection power that we preach, that God is still living through his son Jesus look at your neighbor and say it's not over I just want to bring your attention back to uh, that, 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 that scripture in the opening scripture the 24th chapter of, 
of, of Luke and look into that first verse and we see the Bible says that early in the morning, <laughs> the Bible said that they begin to come because they prepared for somebody who was dead. They prepared to bring spices to a dead situation. And don't you know that people will get up early in the morning to try to bury you in your past, to bury you in your situation, but because Christ lives. Tell your neighbor it's not over. Don't prepare for my burial. Don't prepare for my demise. Don't prepare for my shortcoming. Don't prepare for my downfall because Christ has risen to give me power. Here it is. And I don't want to get sidetracked from the message today because you need understanding of the scripture more than you need a hop and a shout. But here Jesus give me revelation that some people will come to your grave site before they become come to where you are living at. They'd rather see you dead than alive. They know that when you're, when you're dead, you're of no use. <laughs> when you're down and out, you're no use. When, when you're disgusted and when, you're, when, you, when your mind is depressed, you're of no use. But where were you when I needed to be lifted up? Where were you when you needed to encourage me? Where were you? Here you come with spices. Here you come with things to make sure that I'm dead. Look at your neighbor and say, you ain't got to make sure that I'm dead because I'm going to show you I'm living. I'm going to show you that God is moving in me. I'm going to show you that I'm breathing. I'm not going to come to you looking down and out, but I'm going to lift up my head. Y'all sit down, please. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, Psalms chapter 16. Yes. In verse 8. Oh, I mean to bust your bubble. You need to tell your neighbor that because sometimes, sometimes those are the very ones that just, just don't really like what God's doing in your life. They try to get as close as possible they can to you so that they can try to put a negative spirit in your spirit. That's why you got to arm yourself. You got to put on your whole armor of God. Yeah, you got to learn how to withstand the fiery darts. Yeah, I know you don't like what God's doing in my life. See, favor tends to upset people. And see, you need to know that it's not you who is upsetting folk. It's the favor of God. I, I don't want to get sidetracked here. Yeah. But the scripture says, I have set the Lord always before me. Hmm. Look at your neighbor and say it's perspective, perspective, perspective. See, see, you, you, you just can't come in here with religion on your mind. You just can't come in here with Easter on your mind. Because this is not an egg hunt, baby. <laughs> this is not a rabbit. <laughs> Nor is it a basket that you give new babies. <laughs> but this is the word of God that gives you life. And that much more abundantly. The Bible says here that God is saying in the word here that I have set the Lord always before me because he is at my right hand. I shall not be moved. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look at your neighbor and say, ain't nobody going to move me. Now, see, I'm going to tell you, just because you decreed it right now and declare it, something coming now. Something going to try to disrupt you before Friday get here. Something's going to try to throw you off track because you said it out of your own mouth that nothing shall move me. So your children going to try to move you this week. Your job going to try to move you this week. Your loved one going to try to move you this week. The people that you trust the most going to try to move you this week. But I've got to be steadfast unmovable always abounding <laughs> sit down please yeah you gotta learn how to go to work with undertakers yeah you gotta undertakers on your job <laughs> They try to embalm you every chance they can. You got undertakers in your family. They try to rub down spices on you every chance they can get. You got undertakers. Oh my God. You got undertakers in the church that are professional. They 
That's why you got to cover yourself. Y'all sit down, please. I get a little excited. I know it's Resurrection Sunday. Uh, but the scripture here says, he said, because he is at my right hand, and I am, I shall not be moved. Therefore, my heart is glad. Hmm. Boy, that a priest right there all by itself. My heart is glad. Not my emotionalism, because all this singing and, and fluff gonna pass away. But my heart needs to be glad. My heart needs to be satisfied. My heart needs to be in the word. My heart needs to be, my heart, my heart. Look at your neighbor. That's why the Bible tells us, God above all things, guard your heart. Huh. He said, my heart is glad. You could just, you just tell with people all over the place where they don't have any satisfaction, don't have any, any, any hope, or they look depressed, it's because their heart is in the wrong place. You trusted the wrong one. You confided in the wrong one. You talked to the wrong one. You expressed yourself on Facebook, which is not your heart. And you don't understand why you're not glad. Because you trusted in the wrong person. I did not trust. I know some of y'all ain't gonna like the way I preach, but I'm here to tell you that heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word, the word of God. He said, therefore my heart is glad and my glory rejoices. My flesh also shall rest in hope. And sometimes you know you got some hopeless situations and things just don't look right things just just don't feel right things that just don't sound right but you got to trust in God I heard the the, the Bible said David said what wait I for my hope is in thee O Lord I heard Job's wife tell him curse God and die but I heard Job raise up and say, listen, I'm going to trust him. Though he slay me, yet will I trust him. And you got to learn how to trust in the Lord. I know things don't look like they're going your way, but you got to learn how to trust in the Lord. Huh. Yeah. He says, for thou wilt not leave my soul in hell neither will thou suffer thy holy one to see corruption you see his body did not corrupt in the grave he said thou wilt show me the path of life and I need the word of God to show me the path of life I don't need a tune or a high pitch of the service but I need to know, know how to have life. He said, thy word of God is a lamp unto my feet. And the path. Uh, I need life. I don't need a whole bunch of things. I need life. Lock, watch TV. Just looking at glimpses here and there. And everybody right now is super spiritual. Everybody want to talk about Moses and Cecil B. DeMille's. Those of that generation know what I'm talking about, and those who don't know what I'm talking about, I'll tell you. They want to talk about how Charleston Heston was Moses. And Yul Brenner was Pharaoh. They want to animate this thing, but you can't animate it in a way that cuts out the real situation. You got to call sin, sin, and a lie, a lie. In other words, thy presence, in thy presence is the fullness of joy. 
Why do you think the devil trying to keep you from coming to church? Because he's trying to get you out of the fullness of joy. Why do you think he's trying to keep you from hearing the word of God? Because he don't want you to know the path of life. Here it says that his body did not corrupt in the grave. I'll be the first one to tell you that my mother and, body, my mother and father's bodies are, are decaying as we speak. Paul's body is decaying. Or oh, it's already decayed. David's body, who this psalmist is here, is decayed. The, the application of this scripture is found in Acts chapter 2. Or Acts chapter 13 and verse 32. Y'all follow me if you can. I'm going to get to the conclusion in a minute. But you need to get an understanding. The reason why we get into all this other stuff that's going on in the world is because we, we, we understand to get caught up, we get caught up doing something just because that's the way we have always done it or because everyone else is doing it. So I might as well celebrate Easter. But it can be detrimental and cause you to end up in a place you have no business being. Even in hell itself. I know that's a hard word. But guess what? The word is not hard. But the ways of a transgressor is hard. Acts chapter 13 and verse 32 says, And we declare unto you the gospel. Glad tidings. How that the promise which was made unto the fathers, God has fulfilled the same unto us, their children, and that he raised up Jesus. Again, and it is also written where? In the second Psalms. You see that? That that thou, my son, this day, hmm? not on Christmas, you know, at the birth, the birth of Christ that we say, not on Christmas, not on his birthday, his earthly birthday, but his time that he was in the tomb. And when, when God raised him from the dead, he said, this is my begotten. Because even in the, bo in, in the book, even when he was coming up out of the Jordan, the Bible says that this is my beloved son. Hear him. Didn't say this is my begotten son, but this is my beloved son. Mmm. Kind of quiet. You got to take them eggs back. I know you didn't color them already. But they ain't good for nothing but nutrition right now. Kind of quiet. Then Jesus says here his body would not see corruption because he's not in the grave. Worms eat at my parents, their corpse, but Jesus seen none of this quiet. Jesus announced this sign to an evil generation. And he said that his body did not corrupt in the grave. Acts chapter 2, or oh, let's go to Psalms chapter 16. Hmm. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Oh, let's go to Acts chapter 2, verse 24. It's all right. And all you'll get and get what? The Bible says, whom God has raised up, having loosed the pains of death, because it was not possible that he should what? Be holden of it. For David speaketh concerning him. I foresaw the Lord always before my face. 
for he is on my right hand, that I should not be moved. Therefore my heart rejoiced and my tongue was glad. Moreover, also my flesh shall rest in hope. Look at your neighbor and say hope. Now look at your other neighbor and tell him hope. See, because that will not leave my soul in hell, neither wilt thou suffer thy holy one to see corruption. Thou hast made known me the ways of life. Thou shalt make me full of joy with thy countenance. Men and brethren, let me freely speak unto you of the patriarch David. As I spoke to you of the patriarchs of Mother Hunt, and Dr. Hunt, that they are both dead and buried, and their sepulcher is with us this day. Therefore, being a, a prophet and knowing that God has sworn with an oath to him that of the fruit of his loins, according to the flesh, he would raise up Christ to sit on his throne to have power over his kingdom. Mm. He seeing this before spake of the resurrection of Christ that his soul would not be left in hell. But I want to tell you that the Bible tells us that he had to be like Jonah. The scripture says, he says like Jonah, he went into the heart of the earth, Jonah went into the belly of a fish for three days and three nights. Jesus even talked to this evil generation and they seek the sign, show us a sign. You know, folk wanna come to your church with, I don't see nothing going on here. Why are you looking for a sign? You need to be looking for the word of God. Why are you looking for something uh, uh, in the physical when you need to be finding it out in the spiritual. It's not your physical because your physical is going to phase out. Mm. You know how some people will leave you after they find out who you really are? Kind of quiet. After they really get a taste of what it is you're all about? Because on the outside you look like one thing but on the inside, oh God, I wish I could talk. That's a whole nother sermon. The Bible says in Matthew chapter uh, 12 and verse 38, then certain of the scribes and the Pharisees answered, uh, saying, Master, we should see a sign from thee. Hmm? Talking about you mystified, holier than thou, uh, spiritual folk here. Hmm? Said, I need to see a sign from thee. But he answered and said unto them, An evil and an adulterous generation seeketh after a sign, and there shall be no sign given to it. But the sign of the prophet who? Jonas. And for as Jonas was three days and three nights in the well, in the belly, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. Don't you know that he had to go to hell to preach to them folk that didn't know? That he had to go through the grave to do it. Aren't you, oh, you know, I, that's why I don't like dealing with somebody that can't get something done. Kind of quiet. Amen. Here Jesus got something done even if he had to go through the grave to do it. And sometimes you got to go through hell and high water to get things done in ministry. And if you're going to cop out just because you're having a little problem, here it is Christ had to die, go into the grave. And then when he was in the grave, he was yet working. Mm. When your problems hit you, you got to learn how to continue to work. You got to learn how to give your problems all that they can deal with. Yes, mm. Jesus went through hell to preach to those that did not have an opportunity to hear the gospel. Because what? They were no longer under the law, but now grace has been dispensed. 
And you got to understand that while you were yet in your mess, you were under grace. You could have died and went to hell, but no, God gave you grace. That's why your mistakes do not tell you that it's over, but it only sets you up for the greatest comeback of your life. Yeah. It says here, it says in three nights in the heart of the earth, the men of Nineveh shall rise in judgment with this generation and shall condemn it because they repented at the pre preaching of Jonas. Behold, a greater than Jonas is here. Look at your neighbor say, a greater than Jonas. Yes, yes, they'll preach you out of hell. Preach you out of your situation. Preach you out of your, 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 your shortcomings. His name is Jesus. Our faith is in the living. Hmm. All this dead word, you need to have some live word. You need to be where God can deal with your situation right now. You know, I love the testimonies of old. I love what God did for you in the past. But I need something that God is going to deal with me right now in the future. The Bible says, and as they were afraid and bowed their faces to the earth. Luke chapter 24 and verse 5. The scripture says, why seek ye the living amongst the dead? Almost finished here. But we don't need to be seeking the living amongst the dead. We don't seek the living Savior amongst the dead. We don't go to the graveyard to find Jesus. Because there's nothing living down at the graveyard. Your mother or your father can't see them flowers that we put at the graveyard. Kind of quiet up in here now. But we are living in the now and Jesus said why seek ye the living amongst the dead the scripture said why seek ye the living amongst the dead Ephesians chapter 4 verse 17 to 21 hallelujah you know this is a holiness message and we need to understand the holiness of God and understand what he is representing in our lives that if he's living, that we need to come out of dead works. The scripture said the works of the flesh. It says we, we, why would the believer go to the flesh, sin, and think Jesus will keep them in the afterlife? How you think that you're going to live like the world? Come to church and think that God is going to deal with you in your mess and that everything is all right. I know you said this Easter Sunday we need a hopping message so we can get members. No, I'm not into that fashionable preaching. You need to know where your soul is. Because at any time you could leave this planet. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 17. This I say therefore and testify in the Lord that ye henceforth walk not as other Gentiles in the vanity of their mind, having their understanding and darkened, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of of their what heart who being past feeling uh, have given themselves over unto lasciviousness sexual obsession to the work of uncleanliness with greediness 
but ye have not so what? Learn Christ. And it be, if so be, that ye have heard him and have been taught by him as the truth is in Jesus. Ah, and that's why we get to the next scripture in Matthew chapter 24. And I know you're saying we're reading a lot, but guess what? When you go to the doctor, you said, read my chart because I want to live. Tell me what I got to do so I can live. The sinner cries out, what must I do to be? Mm, not how I should dance, or how I should church, or how I should be like the next one. Mm, kind of quiet in here. I love it, though. The Bible says here, and it is in red, chapter 13, or chapter 24 and verse 23, then if any man shall say unto you, lo, here is Christ. Now I may lose some of y'all now. Hmm? Christ is over here. See, we used to get on our, 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 you know, founding fathers about being so strict about going everywhere we wanted to go. Christ is over here. They preaching the same word over here. They're doing the same thing over here. But the Bible tells us we cannot what? We cannot follow in the doctrines of men. We cannot look for a living Christ in dead works. Doctrines of religion. Dead doctrines. We can't fellowship with the Jehovah's Witness. Can't fellowship with the Mormon. Can't fellowship with the Muslim. I'm not trying to offend nobody, but I'm trying to tell you the truth. And I want you to understand, yes, commentaries are all good, but you need a discernment of Scripture. Mm. I used to love the way my parents used to teach on that, and my mother was hard on discernment. Said, baby, you need a discernment. Yeah, not a discernment how to dance and shout, not a discernment how people are speaking in tongue, but you need a discernment of scripture. Yes, you can put a word together and you can preach like two earths and worlds are coming together, but unless you have a discernment, you'll still go home and cuss your husband out. Unless you have a discernment. Whew. No, this is a little tight for you. It says here, it said, in so much that if you were possible, the scripture says that here you got, for they shall arise false Christs and false prophets and shall show great signs and wonders in so much. In other words, you get so caught up in your emotionalism, so caught up in the dance and the shout. Yes, you know, this Pentecostalism has taken the world by storm. Especially back in the late 90s and, and, and in the early 2000s when, when you had the Catholic organization talking about charismatic night. And they were trying to get hold of different uh, Pentecostal preachers would come over and could you teach our folk how to be charismatic? And could you teach our folk how, how you do these, this dancing and shouting and the, the, the inspiration of the music? But I, I beg the different. It was not an inspiration of the music. <laughs> it was not something that can be taught. It's something that had to be birthed on the inside of you. Because if the Spirit of God ever hits you, you don't have to worry about somebody else getting up and say, lift up your hands. If the Spirit of God ever hits you, you don't have to worry about somebody say, lift up your head. If the Spirit of God ever hits you, you don't have to worry about the music being on time or the beat being on time because it's something down on the inside of you. Yeah. So it's not a dead fellowship. It's why I need discernment. We know Jesus has power over death. You have to understand that what he was telling them, it says here in Matthew chapter 16, he told them, he says, he says, listen, he said, I'm coming. 
And I want you to know that I'm coming and I'm going to build my church. He said, upon this rock, the very gates of hell shall not prevail against it. So we know his, his power is greater than the grave. What God gives you is greater than anything that you're going to go through. The Bible says that God's great power raised and exalted him. And what God did for us when Jesus left that tomb is give us hope. Hope that I can make it. Knowing that I can overcome. Knowing that nothing can hold me back but me. And what you need to pray for is, Lord, deliver me from me. Deliver me from my own thoughts. Deliver me from my own mind. Deliver me from my own situation. You got to understand, I don't care how anointed you think you are. I don't care what position you rise to in the church, that the devil will always try to use your mind against you. He'll try to use depression to entrap you. He'll try to use shortcomings and things and thoughts. That's why you got to have the power of the Holy Ghost to bring those imaginations down everything that would try to exalt itself over the knowledge of God. I know I'm a child of God. I know that I'm a child of the king. I know I should be the head and not the, lend the tail. I know that I should be the lender and not the borrower. But every now and then, yes, care who you are, every now and then the enemy tries to talk to you. But the Bible is right. For the Bible said in Jesus, being full of the Holy Ghost, did enter into the wilderness, being tempted 40 days and 40 nights. Woo. But he fought, he fought the devil. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, you got to learn how to fight the enemy. You got to learn how to overcome the enemy. You got to learn, for he said greater, touch your neighbor and say greater is he that is within me. Y'all sit down please. Tell your neighbor power. Tell them God's great power. Look at your other neighbor that want a church with you today and tell them God's great power. Tell them I feel it in the atmosphere. I feel it in my feet. I feel it in my hands. I feel it. God's great power, say it. Oh, sit down, please. Promise to get you out of here in a few more minutes. I know you like to eat lamb on Easter. I know you like to eat some lamb on Resurrection Day. But it's not the lamb on your plate. But it's the lamb of God who taketh away the sin of the earth. The Lamb of God, oh precious Lamb, for it's the blood that I'm saved by. It's the blood that I'm healed by. It's the blood. Hey, glory to God. Huh. Y'all sit down. For the Bible is right. For the word of God said. And what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us work who believe according to the working of his mighty power which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him on his right hand in heavenly places look at your neighbor and say with each level comes a new devil but God is in all the levels 
dealing with every devil, dealing with every demon, dealing with the hater, dealing with the jealous, dealing with the enemy, dealing with the strife. You got to purge yourself with the word of God. You got to build yourself up in your most holiest faith and say, for God I live. Oh, oh, yeah. Come on and praise him. Tell your neighbor greater, 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 greater. Tell your neighbor greater, 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 greater. Tell your other neighbor till they get it. Greater, 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 greater. Tell your other neighbor, greater, 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 greater. Look behind you and tell your neighbor, greater, 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 greater. He is the great I am. He is the great. He is the alpha and the omega. He is the beginning and the end. And he's greater. Now look back at him and say, guess what? He lives, he lives, he lives in me. He lives in me and I call him great. I call him amazing. I call him awesome. Y'all sit down, please. For the Bible is right. For the Bible is right. For he said in heavenly places, for above all principalities and powers and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only this world, but also in that in which to come and has put all things. Look at your neighbor and say, I know money answers all things. Tell your other neighbor and say, I know money answers all things, but Jesus answers everything. Tell him again, Jesus answers everything. And if you call him, Y'all sit down, please. I got to can't help it. I can't help but to think of the goodness of Jesus and all he's done for me. I know that when I think this way, that my soul Yes, I feel reconciliation in this house. I feel healing in this house. Said he put all things under his feet and gave him to be the head over all things in the church. This is what I don't understand. How you gonna let church work upset you? How, how you gonna let when other folk that are supposed to be spiritual and supposed to have a connection with God. Overlook you. Can, can, I, can I come back again? People that think that they're doing God a service seem to overlook you. And you in your flesh get upset because you feel you've been overlooked. But if God ever got something for you, you don't have to worry about them ever overlooking you. Because when God begins to do a thing, oh, look at your neighbor and say, when God decrees something that is in your loins, Touch three people say, stop looking for the validation. Stop looking to be validated. Stop looking to be validated. God already raised you up.
if it's in you. My, 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 my. Sit down, sit down, please. That's why he told Ephesians chapter 3 and 20 says, now unto him who is able to keep me from falling. What you got to understand, God gave you glue. So use it. Everybody talking about Gorilla Glue is the strongest ever. I beg to differ. I believe that the anointing which destroys every yoke. Now unto him who's able to keep me from falling. Tell your neighbor he's able to keep you from falling apart. So don't let the words like, I can't make it. I don't know what I'm going to do or what's going to happen now. If you believe that he's able. If you fix your, if you fix your relationship, you won't have to fix your vocabulary. Tell your neighbor, tell your other neighbor, because tell them if you fix your relationship, you won't have to fix your vocabulary. Because the vocabulary is like this. Believe on me. And out of the scripture has said that out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. No negative talk but living water, I can do, I can become, I am the head, I'm not the tail, I am the lender. Tell your neighbor, speak those things that are not as though they were. This is what our Savior meant when he said, I came to give you life that much more abundant. The problem is, is your relationship. And you begin to talk negativity because your relationship is strained. And you don't have the right words in your mouth because you have no word of God in you. And when you can't fight like Christ was able to fight in the wilderness. And he didn't fight in and of himself, but he fought with the word of God. Come on, sit down. Yeah. So you understand that the foundation, he said, he said, nevertheless, the foundation of the Lord standing on shore, having these. Huh? I heard a brother say the other night, he had the fifth verse or the, or the fifth word, I thirst. I think that's the fifth word. Ain't it? Come on now. Y'all help me. Y'all just come out of seven words. Who had our thirst? Who had our thirst? Wait a minute now. Y'all can preach, but you can't come back to work to church? Oh, 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 it was somebody from out of town. But the scripture goes to say this. After this. Mm, that'll preach you, though. Because, see, you're going through a trial or a tribulation. God wants you to have an after this in your spirit. After this, just like he told them, he said, destroy this body. In other words, he said, after this, he said, you won't be able to destroy me no more. And see, what the trial or the tribulation comes not to destroy you or to disrupt your walk with God, but it comes to solidify your walk with God. It comes to strengthen your walk with God. It comes to support your walk with God. Because after this, the temptation won't matter no more. After this, the hurt or the pain won't be felt anymore. Because after this, when God gets finished with me in this trial, that after this, Just when the enemy said it was over for you, God is putting in a new foundation. God is refooting. You know how to, you know how you look on some people's house and the house is sagging on one side. 
That's because the, the foundation has been compromised. You can't let your foundation be compromised to the one point they look like you sagging. God said, lift up your head. All that I did for you, sending my son, the only begotten of the Father. Woo. Yeah. Genesis chapter 3, verse 15. The Bible talks to us about this promise. The Bible says to us, it says here, and I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed, and it shall bruise thy head. I want you to understand this right now, because this is a revelation from God. God said, my word at some time, at some points, is going to come up against you, and it's going to give you a headache. I'm going to bust you in the head, but it ain't going to kill you, but it's going to right your ship. The word is going to come, it's going to knock you unconscious, it's going to knock you down, but guess what? It's going to fix you. Hmm. He said, because this word is a healing word. This word is a redirecting word. This word is a correcting word. This word is a judgment word. This word is to get you in line. So all you people that just don't like nobody preaching on your situation, it's not the preacher, but it's God finding you through the power of the Holy Ghost. He said, I've got to bruise your head. Because if I keep letting you go the way you're going, you're going to kill yourself. All you who don't believe that he's talking about the word, look at John chapter 1. He said, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God, and the word became flesh and dealt with you. In me and everybody else in this room who think they're exempt from the word. The word found you when you was talking about somebody else. The word found you. The word found you when you were stealing. Ha. The word found you when you were getting high. The word found you when you were smoking cigarettes and didn't think nobody else knew that you were smoking. The word found you when you were drinking and getting high. The word found you. That's what the word does. It finds you. It finds you. It finds you because you're lost without the word. Jesus is saying, God is saying here, Satan has been defeated. And so the rest of that scripture says, and we're going to close, but the rest of that scripture says that, oh, if shall bruise thy head, and then he says it shall crush the devil's head. He's going to crush the enemy's head. It's going to bruise your heel. And unto thy woman, he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow in conception. This is why folks who get pregnant today, you have so much labor pain. <laughs> in sorrow, thou shalt bring forth children. Thy desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. Mm. It's kind of quiet up in here. Satan has been defeated. If Christ never came back, there would be no good news. If Jesus never raised, if God never raised Jesus from the dead, there would be no church. The devil who had power of sin and death was defeated by Christ's death and his resurrection. Christ's resurrection abolished death, life, and immortality. He says that they believed in his death. Matthew, Mark chapter 16, verse 14 talks about they believed in Christ's death, but they didn't believe in his resurrection. People will believe in your demise. 
but they'll never believe in your comeback. That's why you got to believe in your own comeback. I'm finished. You can't wait for somebody else to believe that you on your comeback. You can't wait for somebody else to celebrate your comeback. You got to be like David and begin to celebrate God yourself. Celebrate what God is doing in you, for you. I believe in this word of God. I believe that I'm entitled to everything that God has promised in his word. I'm not going to be running around here chasing Easter bunnies. Looking for, to give my grandchildren no baskets? No, we don't do that. They're going to get clothes that they need when they need it. I'm not going into debt trying to look good on a fabricated holiday. It's not about the materialistic situation that this world presents, but it's about the spiritual. He said, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto me. Once you grab your neighbor by the hand and stand to your feet. God is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all we can ask or think. According to the power that worketh in us. We have a sure and living hope, hope of resurrection. David was hopeful in victory over death. The Messiah's resurrection gave us living hope. I believe that hope is in this room right now. I believe that power, deliverance, healing, is in this room right now. God is healing at this moment right now. Some of us came to church today. Didn't know where we were going when we left. And when we get ready to leave this building. Because hope captivated by depression. Feelings or hurt have overwhelmed. But I believe that hope that God is dispensing is in this house right now. That as we speak, as we're grabbing our neighbor by the hand, that we're clutching that hand at that point of contact, I believe God is doing a new work. I feel him in this atmosphere right now. Everything that we need is in this atmosphere right now. If you just begin to meditate on what God is going to do for you, and the answers that you want God to answer, they're being answered right now. If you believe, 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 believe. Father, we thank you for this day. Frank, we thank you for the resurrection of your son, Jesus. There may be some in here that need to be reconciled. Reconciled in their family, reconciled in their relationship with you.